Well, welcome back. We're now in section 4.2 and analyzing two major theorems about this particular uh, information. Uh, it's called the mean value theorem and the other theorem actually we're going to analyze is the Rolls theorem. So uh, section 4.2 is actually called the mean value theorem, which is all this stuff is based upon. But we're first going to start out with uh, Rolls theorem. Rolls theorem says this, let f of x be a function such that f of x is continuous on the closed interval between a and b and f of x is differentiable which means you can take a derivative at the points on the open interval any point between a and b and you got one third condition f of a had to be equal to f of b then Rolle's theorem says this then there is a number c in the interval between a and b open interval between a and b such that f prime of c equals zero in other words we can find ourselves a critical point now, from a visual perspective, this is what's going on. Here's a point A and B, and uh, like we said before, F of A right there has to be equal to F of B. So the Y coordinates are the same at, the, at A and B. And between these two points, you've got to have a nice continuous differentiable, which means it's nice and smooth, smooth and continuous function connecting these two guys around. And I just happen to connect them this way. It's just any way you want to connect these two points. There it is, as long as it's nice, smooth, and continuous. Then, according to Rolle's theorem, there exists a point C. And this one happens to have two points C. There'll be a point, what I call C1 right there, and there's another one right here, what I'm going to call C2, because if you analyze my graph, at these two points, the slope of the tangent line is zero, or in other words, f prime of C equals zero. So this one has more than one point, but Rolle's theorem guarantees at least one point in the in between A and B where F prime of C will be equal to zero. An extension of that would be the uh, mean value theorem. The mean value theorem says this, let F of X be a function such that F of X is continuous on the closed interval between A and B and F of X is differentiable on the open interval between A and B. Then there is a number c in the interval between a and b such that f prime of c is equal to f of b minus f of a over b minus a. Now you've seen that formula before. This is called the mean slope because it's the slope formula or average slope if you will. f of b minus f of a over b minus a. So it's an extension of the uh, Rolle's theorem but here's the, 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 that last condition wasn't given. You don't have to have f of a equals f of b. So you have two different points. Here's a and here's b. So plotting a point, here's f of a. Here's another point, f of b. And if you connect these two guys with any kind of function, there it is, nice continuous function between these two points. Now what it says is this. As long as that function is continuous and differentiable, you see there's a slope of a, tan of a line, a slope of a line between the points a and b there. You're guaranteed there's going to exist a point, I think it's right about there, point C that's going to be in your interval, that when I look at the derivative of this guy, the f prime of C, that point right there, would be equal to the slope of the two endpoints. And the slope of the two endpoints is f of B minus f of A over B minus A. That is parallel lines here. Okay. Uh, the other classic theorem here, the constant theorem, says that when if f prime of c equals zero, excuse me, f prime of x equals zero, for all x in an interval, a and b, then f of x is going to be constant on that interval. Because when the derivative is equal to zero, the derivative is equal to zero at max min points, but if it's at all the points in between a and b, here's a and b and here's the slope of the tangent line must be zero, that's called a constant function. However, a corollary to that is that if f prime of x is equal to g prime of x, for all x in the interval between a and b, then f minus g uh, is a constant on the interval from between a and b. You look at this and go, well, what does that have to do with anything? Well, here's the idea. If the derivatives of two functions are equal to each other, then the original functions are going to be equal to each other uh, up to a constant. That's what this thing is basically saying. Just because derivatives are equal to each other, the, the, the original functions are going to be very close to being equal to each other up to a constant. You know, it's the old plus c there. That's really what's going on. So let's take a look at some of my examples that help you guys out with these pre-section quizzes here. Here we go. Example. 
Consider the function f of x equals 2x squared minus 6x plus 4 on the interval between negative 1 and 3. But verify that this function satisfies the three hypothesis of Rolle's theorem on the interval. So let's go back to Rolle's theorem. There's three things that you have to have to have Rolle's theorem. The first hypothesis on Rolle's theorem was that f of x had to be continuous on the closed interval. The second hypothesis was that f of x has to be differentiable on the open interval between a and b. And the third hypothesis is that f of a equals f of b. So here we go. Now what was it again? Oh yeah, on the interval between negative 1 and 3, on the closed interval, the function had to be what? That was continuous. So you type in the word continuous. Okay. And f of x is, had to be what on the open interval? On the open interval, it had to be differentiable. Okay. And the third thing is that f of uh, a had to be equal to f of b. Now let's com com confirm this. What is f of negative 1? That would be 3 times negative 1 squared minus 6 times negative 1 plus 4. Well, let's see here. Negative 1 squared is 1 times 3 is 3. Negative 6 times negative 1 is plus 6 plus 4. Hmm, I got 13 out of that. Let's confirm it. What is f of 3 going to be equal to? That will be 3 times 3 squared minus 6 times 3 plus 4. 3 squared is 9 times 3 is 27. 3 times 6, 6 times 3 is uh, 18 plus 4. Let's see here. 27 minus 18 is 9. 9 plus 4 is 13. They are equal to each other, and it's equal to 13. Now, the last little bit about this one says this. Then, by Rolle's theorem, there's going to exist a, uh, a, a c in your interval such that f prime of c equals 0. Well, remember, my, f of my function is f of x equals 3x squared minus 6x plus 4. So f prime of x would be 6x minus 6. Now, let's set that equal to 0. Officially, it's supposed to be f of c, so I'm going to plug c in there, so it'll be... 6 times c minus 6 equals 0. Solve for c. So 6c would be equal to 6. Add 6 to both sides. Divide by 6, you get c is equal to 1. So this one, my c value must be equal to 1, but you'll notice my interval was between negative 1 and 3, and notice 1 is right inside that interval. So I knew there was going to be an answer because Rolle's theorem guaranteed to be that, example, at that answer. Okay. Second question is this. This is a mean value theorem kind of problem. Consider the function 3x squared plus x plus 5 on the interval between negative 1 and 4. Find the average or mean slope of the function on that interval. And remember, the mean slope was at f of b minus f of a over b minus a. So here we go. What is f of 4 going to be equal to? We'll write them up here. f of 4 would be 3 times 4 squared plus 4 plus 5. And let's break out our calculator for that guy. So here we go. 3 times 4 squared plus 4 plus 5. I got 57. And the other one I got to find is f of negative 1. f of negative 1 would be 3 times negative 1 squared plus negative 1 plus 5. Since we got the calculator out, let's use it again. 3 times negative 1 squared plus, the parentheses around it, negative 1 plus 5. And I got 7. So here we go. So the mean slope would be f of 4 minus f of negative 1 over 4 minus negative 1. f of 4 was 57 minus f of negative 1 was 7 over 4 minus negative 1. Changing y over changing x. Classic slope formula. Well, let's clean this up here. 57 minus 7 is just 50. 4 minus minus, minus minus a plus. 4 plus 1 is 5. That makes it easy. 50 divided by 5 is 10. So my mean slope, according to Rolle's theorem, would be 10 as the slope of the endpoints. Now, 
By the mean value theorem, we know there exists a C in the open interval between negative 1 and 4, such that F prime of C is equal to this mean slope. Let's find what it is. So, first off, what's the derivative of this guy? F prime of X. Well, that would be derivative of 3X squared is uh, 6X. Derivative of X is 1. Derivative of 5 is 0. So, therefore, F prime of C, to put it in the context of uh, the mean value theorem, would be 6 times C plus 1. Now that's supposed to be equal to this mean slope that we just calculated from, rules, uh, from the uh, mean value theorem. And the mean slope was 10. Solve for C. Now we're going to check. Now remember, the interval that this thing was defined on was between negative 1 and 4. But it guaranteed, according to the mean value theorem, that between open parentheses negative 1 and 4, that my C value, which whatever it may be, better be in this interval. Let's take a look. Solve this thing. Well, I got 6c plus 1 equals 10. Subtract 1 from both sides. I get 6c equals 9. Divide by 6 on both sides. So I get c equals 9 sixths, which reduces by 3, which makes it 3 halves. Or, better yet, 1.5. Now, C is equal to 1.5. Is that in my interval between negative 1 and 4? You know it is. According to the uh, mean value theorem, it was guaranteed. So hopefully this has been uh, very helpful in understanding these two major theorems, mean value theorem and the uh, Rolle's theorem. So see you guys in the next video.